I'm going to give my thoughts on the latest dev talk talking about the Awakened and Legendary items. And uh, let me tell you, I'm not going to actually play the video, but I will show you image stills. So, for instance, right now we have Robin Hinkies, CEO of Sandbox Interactive here on the screen. And I'll, I'll tell you, I've been I googled for like 40 minutes to try to figure out what watch he is wearing, and I could not find it. I, I looked through all the luxury watches in the world, and I could not find one like this. So, I don't think this man is spending a lot of money on his watches for a CEO, but... I don't really know what that means. I'm just trying to be funny. Also, a few things before we get into it. Does it look like he got a tan? I think he's been outdoors a little bit. Also, people need to stop asking me in live streams to do a face reveal, okay? I'll, I'll tell you what I look like. I look like Robin Hankies, but older, okay? And, uh, of course, I'm way fatter. <laughs> Also, Bushy0 underscore here states that people will abuse these legendary weapons in Yellow Zone because you know the Swole Benji type's going to abuse it. Hell yeah, we are. And here's another comment. Swole Benji is going to abuse these weapons to bully people in Yellow Zones. Now, I'll tell you right now, I don't need any more power to do what I do in Yellow Zones, but might as well, right? So my first gripe is the glowing rainbowness of the weapons. If I want a legendary weapon, I want it to be like on fire, not so much glowing purpley rainbowy colors, but hey, whatever. Now, this scene threw me off because this character model's face, you can't be this in the game to my knowledge. This is not possible. Uh the facial hair, I don't think that's even a thing, and then the face itself, you can't do that. When I'm in the appearance preview, none of those facial hairs match at all. Like, it's not that one, because that has a beard, and this one doesn't. So, or it has a mustache, and that one doesn't. That one doesn't have the lines leading up to the mouth. Like, where the hell is that cosmetic option at in the game? It's not that one. It's not that one, because they all have beards, so what the heck? And also the face. Like, and the hairstyle, like, dude, how do you look like this? At this point in the video, they talk about uh, earning attunement points by doing PvE activities. Now, a lot of people, especially in the comments, just automatically assume this means black zone only or red zone only PvE. And if that's the case, that really sucks because 92% of the player base does not ever go to those zones. So that means 8% of the player base will be the only ones making legendaries. In this scene of the video, there's a few things that really make no sense on this UI. So, essentially, we're going to replace a trait with one or all of the following, right? So here is plus 16 maximum energy. But on the table here, it says that the minimum plus maximum energy we can receive is 19.8. So why are we only receiving 16? So I don't know if, like, once this sword levels up, this is the new next level that we will be able to choose from. But I, I also want to mention how terrible some of these roles can possibly be. So let's assume that when you level the sword up, you get to choose four random traits out of... Well, how many is on screen here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And that is, like, 75%. So 15 plus another 25% would be 5 so that you have 20 different traits to choose from. That is 4 out of 20 traits, and I'm not memeing here. Um, so that means you have a 20% chance to get the trait that you want to build your weapon around, and if you don't, it's garbage. Maybe that's what reroll is for, I don't know. But essentially, some of these traits are... <laughs> they're so bad. Okay, let me, let me talk about the bad ones. You would need hundreds of these to make them even worth considering. This is a physical ability bonus. This is not a percentage. This is a fraction of a percent at the highest possible. Yes, bandit event. I see you. Freaking bandit event, dude. I don't care. <laughs> um, <laughs> free time, man. But uh, let's get back to this. Okay, so physical ability bonus at maximum roll. It's at an additional 0.33 percent. A 0.33 percent. Point. .33%. point. That's not even 1%. So if you rolled this, I don't even know how many times. Uh, it still would be garbage. Absolutely. And then attack range bonus, 0.6 of a percentage. 
So if your maximum rage is 21, look, let me show you the math. We're going to take 21 and we're going to add 0.6%. Congrats. Now it's 21.12%. So that's one level up, two level up, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. After 20 levels of max rolls, you got two meters longer range on your spell. That sucks. That is so bad. But uh, attack speed, again, 0.72. That's, that's nothing. When you activate a Hunter Jacket, you get like 50, 40, 50, 60%. What is Hunter Jacket? I have a Hunter Jacket somewhere. Hunter Jacket is attack speed by 60%. All right, and that doesn't even feel, you know, it feels like an okay amount, right? But uh, you're never going to reach anywhere near that with that number. But this, okay, it's been bad so far, but this is where it gets crazy overpowered. Physical attack bonus. So what this means is your auto attacks. And they have a chance to triple in damage. Triple in damage? I can auto attack with some very high-end weapons for hundreds of damage very quickly. If I'm auto-attacking for... This is just one level. Imagine one level, two level, three level, four level, you know, whatever, right? You get this perk four times on a weapon, you're dealing ten times your auto-attack damage. That means I walk up and auto-attack you and, and you're halfway dead in one hit. One auto-attack, right? Do you know how many weapons scale amazingly well with auto-attacks? I'll, sh I'll show you. All right, first up is... um. Not technically right, but, um, Grudge... Where is Grudge? Uh, Grudge is... It, it boosts your auto attack magical damage. That's That doesn't really count, okay? Uh, that's just a meme. Uh, hey, check it out. Arcanist, look at this, the passive. 120% attack speed and 33% attack range. You get hit three to four times every time they cast a spell. And, uh, you, you know, Matt, you know... <laughs> Is that does their auto attack count as magic damage? If so, that wouldn't apply. But I'm pretty sure it's physical. But I could be wrong on that. But anyway, let's continue along now. And uh, like, here's one <laughs> oh boy, double bladed staff. This thing, yeah, there it is. Physical damage. Okay, imagine this number by 200 percent. Okay, that's 159 damage <laughs> from one single level. If you get max roll, okay. So that means your damage per second is now 315. <laughs> and then you get the four or five levels on that. Yeah, you're doing 1,200 damage per second. <laughs> you you could just auto attack. You would just be a... Dude, you would be like one of those... You would be like uh, in a giant war battle like Lord of the Rings. You would be Sauron just swinging his mace around, killing everybody. That's what that means. All right. And, and here, let's continue. There's It gets even more stupid and ridiculous. Because auto attacks are, like, a real threat in some builds. All the daggers have amazing auto attacks, especially Death Givers. A again, 53 physical damage, the attack speed is insanely high. Um, freaking, uh, <laughs> it's so stupid, right? And, uh, what else? Um, you know, all nature staffs, you're doing an auto attack. I don't know if it counts as magic, I guess it counts as magic damage. Bows! The regular bow! Look at this! Look at this! Attack speed, 50%, physical attack damage, 220%. So that means one, <laughs> one, maybe two levels of a legendary weapon, you're basically giving yourself the attack damage that the Enchanted Quiver gives. You know how broken that, that's broken as F. That's insane. That's so stupid. But what damage versus players? Again, it's a fraction of a percent. Who cares? Cast time modifier, a fraction of a percent. Don't matter. CC duration, a fraction of a percent, doesn't matter. CC, oh, <laughs> CC resistance plus 120? Bro, do you understand how much that is? That's nuts. Look at, look at plate armors. Let's look at plate armors here. And like, uh, CC resistance. Uh, 40, well, that's 40 flat. CC resistance plus 156. All right. And you're, you're telling me that like two levels... Of a, of a legendary, this is on a weapon, by the way, um, is going to give you the resistance of plate armor. That's that's pretty damn legendary to me, okay? Cooldown modifier, fraction of a percent defense versus players. This is actually pretty big. Defense versus players is huge. If you get this roll every time, and I don't know how many rolls there are, but if there's a lot of rolls, you're going to be unkillable. 
Ability cost reduction, not a big deal. Max energy, this one means extra abilities, especially on mana hungry weapons. This could be pretty good. Energy regeneration, who cares? Healing cast bonus, who cares? Who cares? A again, this is just the most broken bullshit ever. So this is interesting. At this point, it talks about weapon strain, and I want to talk about what that could possibly be based on a few single-player RPGs I've played that have this kind of system. So weapon strain, let's say, uh, you know, at first it takes 1,000 uh, awakening juice. I don't know what it's going to be called. I forget. Uh, to, you know, get the next level of perks. Great. Okay, so now it takes 2,000. All right, hold on. 1,000 at first, first level, then 2,000 on the second level, then 4,000 on the third level, and then you got, um, you know, 8,000 on the fourth level, etc., and then 16,000, right, on the fifth level. And let's say, just to farm 1,000 Renown, or whatever it was called, I forget, you know, that's like a good couple of days in, in the static dungeons, right? So at this point, you know, we're going to have to pay 32,000, you know, <laughs> juice, to uh, pimp out our weapon a little bit harder. Well, 32,000 divided by, what do we say, 1,000, that's 32, and then we're going to times that by two days. So that's 64 days of grinding. At that point, you're probably not going to upgrade the weapon anymore. Well, let's say you did, okay? And then you played this game for like three years. So that's 64 days, and then 128 days, and then 256 days. All right, and then 512 days. And then we divide that by 365. So let's say you played this game for 2.63 years. You're going to have a single item juiced out of the wazoo with these, these weapon levels. And I'm assuming that it might be that way. But it's, you know, it, I don't know yet. It's not released. But if, if, if that's in the game, then that's okay. Because I've always, always, always wanted to play an MMORPG with infinite scaling. Okay, imagine this. This is a little off time, but imagine World of Warcraft. It takes one month for the average person to level up from 1 to 60 on World of Warcraft Classic, right? But let's say you could prestige and go back to level 1 and then level up to 60 again, but by doing so, you get a plus 1 to your strength. Well, plus 1 strength every single month? You play for 2 years, that's plus 24 strength. You're doing more damage than everyone in your raid group because you put in the work to do it. I like that idea. I actually enjoy that. By the way, for those that didn't realize, this is the real announcement of the video. They, they should have titled it this. Uh, Death Recap, coming to Albion. You can click this little... Ah, darkness imprisoning me. Um, <laughs> you can click the recap. Hello, YouTube? Can you fix yourself? Thank you. You can click the recap button and uh, see what you died from. In this case, you got killed by a double-bladed staff. So this part's slightly contradicting because in the past they said that legendary items will only be available from legendary chests. But in this B-roll footage they're showing an epic chest. So I don't know if they've decided to change their minds on that. Who knows? And then here they're showing a green chest. Like, really? Also, I, I don't know if this is a graphical glitch, but um, this player here with the fire staff, <laughs> look how long it is. I've never seen a fire staff stretch that freaking long before. What is going on there? That is weird. So they say the legendary weapons won't work in arena and crystal league, and that's totally fine. I don't, you know, let's let's keep that fair. That's fine. However, what about yellow zones? All right, now I'm going to tell you my opinion. I think they should not work in yellow zones. I think they should not work in faction warfare. And, um, and this is coming from someone who has the money to buy legendaries from guilds. This is coming from someone who could just buy, just pay a guild to farm them a legendary. Or protect me while I farm myself a legendary, right? Like, it doesn't concern me about getting more power in, in faction warfare and yellow zones. What concerns me is, um, it's not having to fight against them either. I don't really care about that. It's the fact that um, if <laughs> if the game allows legendaries to have their effects in yellow zones for, for PvP and faction warfare, then it's over. It's completely over. That means the solo player, which is the, the only place you can really go, uh, you know, as a solo player these days, are the yellow zones and the faction warfare. That's like the most fun thing in the game because it's, it's mostly fair and there's a lot of targets and you can just... Dump your spells, and if you die, it's just a little repair bill, whatever, right? 
But if legendaries come to the game and they're as strong as they're showing right now, it's it's freaking over. A double bladed is gonna jump on you, and you'll be in full 8.4, 120 spec, you know, 4,000, 5,000 HP in your tank set, and you're dead in two seconds. <laughs> like it's over. Also, um, Ness Ness down here, Game Master Ness Ness getting uh, blown up by fire. That's pretty funny. Haha, -ha, I pressed stop record before the bandit event sounded. So I just want to teach you guys a, a fun little trick. When you're watching Albion Online dev videos, you can check the stats of the players. Here's Delaro. Let's see what Delaro is. That's Delaro. It sounds like Canyonero. Look, this person has like no stats, right? It's because they're a staff member. Uh, they, they've never killed anyone. They have no stats. And then Gwendolon. Gwyn Dolon, right? There's another one. So stats Gwyn Dolon, right? Again, like they they've done they've killed one mob on their account. The, these are these are developer accounts. These are like game testers or something. I don't really know exactly, but it's always fun to like look up their names. Like you can look up Ness Ness, right? Stats Ness Ness, and there you go. Give me cookies. <laughs> Uh, and, you know, this person's got plenty of stats, because they, they actually played the game a lot before they became a game master, just in case you're wondering. I just want to mention this camera angle here confirms the sky is indeed blue in Albion Online. Except, of course, around Fort Sterling, because Fort Sterling is a lifeless and gray void. And look, even the end screen here confirms it, okay? This is clearly the landing beach zone for Bartlock's uh, starter zone. You can see, you know, there's the step or the hills, whatever the Mar the Martlock zones, and then you know, to the right of Martlock, blue skies, nice blue skies bridge watch, and straight ahead, you got gray void Fort Sterling. And let me show you in the game. All right, so here's the world map. Here's here's where that boat is landing right here at Highland Cross. This is where the boat's looking. This is where the camera is pointed in this direction. So to the right, look, you got you got bridge watch, blue skies. You got Limhurst, Blue Skies, but then when you go straight across here, we're going straight across, you hit Gray Zone, <laughs> Gray, Lifeless Void, Skies of Fort Sterling. Also, you only need a level 4 enchanted weapon, so this really crappy tier 4 hammer here. <laughs> yeah, for 400,000, you can level this bad boy up to be the next legendary hammer. Name it after your character. Hell, make a character with a, 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 a too stupid name. You know, name a character advertising some kind of crappy, like, thing, right? <laughs> like, some kind of meme name. And then you could craft a legendary, and that name will be stuck to this weapon forever. And it'll be stuck in some player's inventory for eternity. You know what? Legendary weapons, there's one more thing that they need to have, alright? They need some sort of AFK check, right? Imagine if you're a super rich cartel guy, and you just buy all the legendary weapons on every market. And then you just put them in a chest and you let them rot. Well, they're basically removed from the game. Even though legendary weapons can't break or die if they're legendary enough, eventually some rich guy can just stuff it in a chest, never to be seen the light of day ever again, and then when they quit, effectively the legendary item is removed from the game. So, I know there's people complaining, oh, legendary, like, weapons have to break in Albion, or the, the economy's ruined. Bro, like, people can just quit with the stuff in their chest, like, I have a bunch of stuff in my chest I never, ever use. They're not part of the economy. These face scale sandals, I don't use them. I don't think I've ever worn face scale sandals. Yeah, they're level zero. I've never worn these in my life. And um, they're going to sit and rot in this chest until the end of time because I have no use for them. But they're they're 8.4, so I'm going to collect them. People are going to collect legendaries. They're... A lot of people are afraid. They're like, oh, legendaries are going to smash my face in every single... You know, Zerg vs. Zerg Guild, all their top chads are going to be running Legendary Weaponry, and it's like, no, they're not. They're going to use the same shit they always use, because they're going to get killed in clump and dumps. They're not going to risk losing Legendary items. They're going to collect it in on their island. You know, eventually, Albion Online will make uh, a little portrait you can put on the wall, and then you can put your weapon or armor piece on, on that to display. And that's what Legendaries are going to be. They're going to be glowing ornaments for your house. End of story. Also, if legendaries can be farmed in yellow zones or blue zones, guess what's going to be legendary? The most common legendary will be the Shadow Caller. Everyone's going to use these to nuke down statics until they're legendary. There's no reason not to. I mean, come on, it's going to flood the market. Let's look at the comments. Hardcore Expedition players are going to hoard these so hard. Hey, look, it's Marius. You better get legendary weapons in the yellow zone. Hell yeah, brother, preach it.
Francisco Shalom says, terrible, deviated from Albion original content and on schedule would still front. Pretty much, man. I remember, like, in the early talks of Albion, way back, in, before the GoFundMe was ever made, you know, the, the devs at the time were like, yeah, they'll, ne they'll never be legendary loot, they'll never be, like, you have to raid and kill a dragon 10 million times. The only things that they're going to do that for would be mounts and cosmetics, which I believe that's how the game currently is, but now not so much. Deviant says, all solo players are crying right now. SBI trying to force every solo player to be in group is just to get these items. Solo dungeon nerf, road of Avalon nerf, less fame tier, X.4, resource owned by guilds. Great content, am I right? The game is just destroying itself. And for the players who complain about red zone and black zone content being hard, I mean, what do you expect? It's a fully PvP game, and that's meant to be served old veteran players who... Oh, read more. Gank low tier players. That's basically what this legendary weapon is all about. If you want a game that doesn't have fully PvP, just play WoW! Or uh, others MMORPG that doesn't have it. Yellow zone domination vibes. This guy's pretty mad. Literal BS. A, SBI needs a new Ferrari. Let's get point four in and then make it upgradable. Dude, when point four weapons came out, when point four gear in general came out, it pissed so many people off. I know a lot of people that quit over that, and hell, it ruined my entire 8.3 collection I was going for. I was trying to collect every item in 8.3 and Masterpiece, and those are worthless because 8.4 Excellent is a higher item power than 8.3 Masterpiece. It, 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 just, it just erased billions of silver overnight. I hope you gain stats on your legendary weapon by PvP and not PvE. They literally said it's PvE, bro. Players are already avoiding any PvP activity. Don't want another rat fiesta. Overall, good ideas, though. Keep it up. It will be a rat fiesta, and it will become more negative for players because this content will only benefit to 0.05% of all player base, aka streamers and mega guilds slash alliances. For normal players like you, you will never get a legendary weapon. At least you spend like three years or more to get it. And for that time, hardly anyone will be trying, and they will quit the game. Time will prove me right on this, said Lord Warcraft 666. Another pay-to-win update for swipers. You guys need to do an upgrade in dungeons. The rest, we don't care. Dungeons are bottom-tier content now. Early and mid-game need to work. I couldn't imagine being a new player joining the game in the current state and stayed interested. Would be nice to see before this. <laughs> I like this comment. This one's funny. That's so cool, but please maybe redesign they look, please. I mean, this rainbow RGB looks bad, just like my PC. And nothing special. Alright, this comment's pissing me off right here. So many people whining over never having a point four weapon because they're not rich enough. Are you missing the point where if a player dies with a legendary weapon, it goes to the black market? And a total flat 4 random in a tier 5 dungeon could get incredibly lucky and loot it from a green chest? That random can be you. Bro. <laughs> when you play this game 16 to 19 hours a day for 3 years straight, and you haven't ever found a, an 8.3 crypt candle in a dungeon chest, it's never gonna happen. Like, there are... I, I wish you guys could learn from, like, Diablo 4. 6 or 8 million players... And there was like less than 100 Shaco drops or whatever, which was a 0.00001 drop percent chance. I don't know. But the whole point is, is that if only like, let's say 100 legendary weapons are crafted every month. And let's say 20 of those die and go to the black market. That's a 1 in 200 like billion chance to find it. <laughs> Like, you're not getting this, you're not ever going to get a legendary from a chest. And if you do, you can make a Reddit post and get some updates for the week before everyone forgets about it. Uh, here's a smart one. Bad call. First of all, you're trying this to PvE fame. Basically, some weapons will pop off in even just blue zone static farming, and others will simply take ages to level for no reason. Like, here's the thing, right? If I got my dream weapon legendary status, let me tell you about it. Y'all would probably say, oh, it's, it's going to be Bear Paws or Longbow because you can gank transports or you can gank ZVZs and Faction Bomb with it. And it's like, no, my dream weapon, be okay, besides Whispering Bow, let's be real. Besides Whispering Bow would be the Energy Shaper. The Energy Shaper is the coolest weapon in the game because it's a space laser cannon that makes no sense being in existence in this world. It shoots a devastating mega face-melting super laser 
that just kills everything it touches. You're never leveling this up in dungeons. This is not a static dungeon farmable weapon by yourself ever. Uh, it would take, it would be, yes, I could technically do it. I could go to statics with my 8.4, you know, 100 spec energy shaper, and I can use Q, and I can kill, you know, group dungeon mobs. And I can do that for a couple months, and maybe turn this into a legendary at some point. But, uh, nah, man, like, the, when I think of legendary weapons, I don't think of, oh, plus 30% damage, plus 25 additional energy. I'm thinking of, instead of turning this laser beam attack into a frontal cone death kill, how about I change it into an orbital cannon that nukes a giant circle on the screen wherever I aim it? That's what a legendary weapon is to me. Let's let's take another weapon example. Let's take the bolt casters, okay? The E-spell, it rapidly shoots up one single target with a, a crap ton of damage. How about, instead of one target, you let me target two people? That way, each, each bolt caster, because there's two of them, it's like you're dual wielding, which... I guess you can't see because of my appearance flag here. Uh, here, let's take that off. And yeah, see? Look, it's two badass guns, demon guns. Let me shoot one guy with one E and shoot one guy with the other E at the same time. Or how about you, you take the ultimate from uh, Overwatch, Reaper. He's the edgelord guy with the shotguns where he spins around and shoots everyone around him and it deals tremendous amounts of damage. I know this is literally a skill from Diablo 3 and... Possibly Diablo Immortal, but um, copy it. Who cares? It's Blizzard. They're dead anyway. Give that to the legendary bolt casters and let me cast that with the same amount of damage that it does to a single target, but in a circle around me. Or again, just let me cast it twice on two separate targets. I would love that. That would be worth farming a legendary for. I would, I would spend an entire month, 12 hours a day, grinding static dungeons and blue zones, paying for premium, and level it up just to have a weapon that could do that. But, uh, but but bolt casters with a 20% additional auto attack damage, you know, and like 50 extra bonus HP. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to grind that out. I'm not going to level that up. Also, I just want to mention, I looked through every single comment of who, like all 379 comments, which is not a lot of comments for 54,000 views, but um, I didn't see any other content creators on here talking. I don't, do they, do they mute all of us? Uh, let me talk, let, let me talk to you about uh, muting, like, uh... Hey, I can't, I can't leave, there we go. Let, let me show you what happens when I try to leave a comment. Cool update, exclamation point, leave comment. There we go, I just commented zero seconds ago, very nice. Open a little private, private tab there, and we're gonna go click on the video, there it is, I'm gonna pause it, and go to the sort by newest, and it's not there. That's because I'm shadow banned. They, they, they blocked me from commenting on their page. And uh, yeah, it's, um, did they do that to everybody? Because I didn't see anyone else, even the big dick riders. I haven't seen a single one of their comments on here at all. I just thought that was weird. All right, well, that's my discussion. That's my thoughts. Hopefully you enjoyed. Um, let me know what kind of content I should make. I've got about 10 more days worth of videos in Albion, and I'm out of ideas, man. I am like, I am out. Look, I know I've got some money to spend to make some videos, but I've got to wait on the damn content to come out before I can, you know, really do it. And also, just join the Discord, there's a link in the description, pass the questionnaire, let's play some games together, let's do some dungeons, do some Black Zone stuff, whatever. I don't care, let's just do something, anything, I'm desperate at this point. Let's go stream Snipe E Court, I don't know, man. <laughs> With that said, guys, leave a like, it really helps out. You guys haven't been liking the videos lately, so hit that like button. I hate, I, it's cringe for me to say it, you know, it's like... And when other YouTubers, I'm watching their videos, and they're like, like the video, huh? <laughs> and I'm like, eh, fine, whatever, I guess. You know? <laughs> but it's like, oh, it's, it hurts. It hurts to, to ask. It, you know, I read every comment because I have no social life, so please leave a comment so I have something to read. I'm so bored all day. Please save me. I would comment on your videos if you were the YouTuber. Uh, also, subscribe. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers. Once I reach 100,000 subscribers, I'll do something cool. I don't know what I'll do, but it'll make everyone happy, even my haters, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Just, uh, just help me out, please. 100k. It'll be my only achievement in this world before I perish and die <laughs> in a horrible blood sacrifice. <laughs> And, okay, on the right side of your screen is a video you should absolutely click. If you don't click it, you're getting sacrificed in a blood sacrifice. That is a weird autismal sentence. I don't care. Live with it. I'm going to punch more rabbits now on my island.
You know what? I have one more favor to ask besides clicking the right side of the screen for the video. Uh, can you guys go to my channel? Okay, and when you're watching the video, I want you to click my channel name here. Brings you to the main page. Level up. And then go over here to the live tab and click that. And then check this Check this out. This, this is Paleo New MMO Cozy Game Live VOD. Please watch this. It would help me out so much and help me out with the algorithm for ranking for this game. This new game coming out. And uh, check it out. Look, it's like 3D Albion Online. I'm, I'm killing Impalas with a tier 2 bow. And I'm, har I'm getting, like, uh, hides and meat and stuff. It's really cool. Just watch it, and if you don't want to watch the whole thing, that's cool, too. Just leave it running or something. It helps me out. Leave a comment down. No one's commented. Please comment.